Hi, everyone. Welcome to our lecture on types of drug interactions. Let's get started. Let's start with a case. Let's say a 58-year-old woman presents to the clinic and wants to learn more about clopidogrel, since she just saw a commercial on television that advertised it as a way to prevent strokes. She has taken low-dose aspirin for the last five years and wants to know if it's possible to take them together. There are a number of drug interactions to consider, and this is definitely one of them, so let's keep this in mind as we go through the lecture. Our learning objectives for this lecture are to differentiate the types of drug interactions and to be able to indicate an example of each of the types of drug interactions. The first term we're going to discuss is additive. This is defined as the effect of substances A and B together is equal to the sum of their individual effects. For example, aspirin and acetaminophen have their own individual effects, and when taken together, their effects add up. In mathematical terms, we can say 2 plus 2 equals 4. Next, we have the term permissive which is defined as when the presence of substance A is required for the full effects of substance B, such as cortisol on catecholamine responsiveness. Okay, where do we get cortisol? Yep, you're right if you're saying the adrenal gland. Do you remember which area of the adrenal cortex? I think I heard you say zona fasciculata, so great job. So, can you remember how cortisol increases blood pressure? Well, it upregulates alpha-1 receptors on arterioles. When it does this, it increases sensitivity to norepinephrine and epinephrine, our catecholamines. So while epinephrine and norepinephrine have effects on their own, when cortisol is around, it permits way more responsiveness. Anyway, next up, we have the term synergistic, which is defined as the effect of substances A and B together is greater than the sum of their individual effects, like the mathematical equation where 2 plus 2 is greater than 4, or with the example clopidogrel with aspirin. We know that aspirin inhibits cyclooxygenase, and clopidogrel blocks the ADP P2Y12 receptor to prevent platelet aggregation, but they are more valuable together than they are as individuals, and thus they are synergistic. Next, let's discuss the term potentiation, which is similar to synergism, but drug B with no therapeutic action enhances the therapeutic action of drug A. So mathematically, drug B would be represented as zero, and drug A would be some number, like two, and the effects together would be greater than two, like it's shown here. For example, when we discuss Parkinson disease therapy, levodopa should come to mind, but we always think of levodopa with what? Yep, you're right if you're saying carbidopa. But what does carbidopa do? Carbidopa only blocks an enzyme to prevent the peripheral conversion of levodopa to dopamine. Do you remember what enzyme it is? I'll give you a second to think. Yep, it's dopa decarboxylase. Next, let's discuss the term antagonistic which is defined when the effect of substances A and B together is less than the sum of their individual effects, which can be expressed mathematically with 2 plus 2 is less than 4. So when you think of one drug that does something and another drug, when used with it, lessens the other's effect, what comes to mind? Well, it makes me think of an antidote like ethanol as an antidote for methanol toxicity. Finally, let's talk about the term tachyphylactic, which is defined as an acute decrease in response to a drug after initial or repeated administration. 
And this kind of interaction occurs with nitrates, niacin, phenylephrine, LSD, and MDMA. Let's check what we know. What is the term used when drug B has no therapeutic action, but enhances the therapeutic action of drug A? Great, it's potentiation. Remember, levodopa with carbidopa. So let's get back to this case. What do we know now about clopidogrel and aspirin? Yep, it has a synergistic drug interaction, which means the effects of substances A and B together is greater than the sum of their individual effects. Does this mean this woman should take both? Well, we can't say for sure. As you know, each patient is unique with their individual past medical history, past surgical history, risk factors, genetics, and more. As you may also be aware of, guidelines are constantly changing as we learn more about drugs, their metabolism, their effects, and as new drugs are discovered. But it's good to be aware of the types of drug interactions that exist. So the bottom line is that multiple types of drug interactions exist, including additive, permissive, synergistic, potentiation, antagonistic, and tachyphylactic. This emphasizes the need for obtaining a full list of current medications and a medication history and understanding drug interactions. That's all I have for you here. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, and it'll give you the opportunity to submit a comment if you have any feedback or questions. Thanks for joining me. Study hard.